Visualizer or pen tablet, which one should you choose for online learning? So I'll be honest, long story short, I wouldn't be without a visualizer, but I do use the pen tablet more often. So I'd recommend getting both. So most people agree that they'd rather have the pen tablet. I asked on Twitter and 60% of people would rather have the pen tablet, only around 40% would rather have the visualizer and a few percent wanted something different and guess what it was an ipad <laughs> so i'm going to put that in the pen tablet category anyway whilst i agree that the pen tablet the pen input is what i use more often in my day-to-day -day online teaching but the visualizer is something that i wouldn't be without for those moments where i need to show something on the screen so it really is incredibly convenient to teach with the pen tablet or indeed the pen display which i actually use where you can annotate on top of powerpoints so you're used to probably making your lessons in powerpoint so being able to annotate directly on top of them is really convenient but the moments where i need to switch to the visualizer and model something directly with the pen and paper that they are using or how to use the calculator in front of them that's invaluable to me it's great to work on the pen input to show maths and to do algebra but you could do all that on a bit of paper with a visualizer. And most of what I show on a PowerPoint, I don't really need to annotate it. I often do because I think it's quite nice for students to know which part of the slide you're talking about and to draw their attention to different areas and maybe just to add that bit of incidental detail or answer questions that have come up during the lesson. Really, the main advantage of using the pen display is that I don't have to print off the worksheets before the lessons and I don't get this clutter of paper all over my desk. And yeah, the ink tools are pretty good now in Microsoft Word, sometimes do throw up a little bit of an issue. And for that reason, if you're not very technically savvy, I suggest go with a visualizer. Because once you've set it up and the students are looking at whatever's under the camera, it's just like a normal pen and paper, which you'll probably be comfortable with. And using the digital pen creates digital notes, which I'm really comfortable with using, storing and sharing. I think that's a really good thing that you can share that very easily with your class. You can write directly into PDFs or notebooks and you can share them to things like OneNote or Google Classroom or whatever it is that you're using to teach online. So the pen tablet is really great for that direct input into the computer. I think it's great. And yeah, I use it lots. Every lesson without fail. I don't necessarily use the visualizer every lesson, but still I wouldn't be without this one. So tech is amazing for teaching, but I just wanted to shout out this one tweet, which in response to my Twitter poll said, yeah, these things are great, but the first thing I need is I need space to teach. So I just want to shout out all the teachers that are just making some room in the house to set themselves up a digital teaching space and working with what they've got. So I totally feel you, there's a digital divide in the student body and there's also a digital divide in the teaching body as well. But there's also this issue that some people have more or less space and maybe not an adequate space at home to teach. So if that's you, one thing I suggest you do is you, you ask your school if it's okay for you to go and teach in one of the empty classrooms. Having that space can do so much for your mood and your mood can do so much for your teaching as well. So even if it's just one day a week getting you away from whatever cramped space that you're teaching in, it might just do the world of good. For me personally, buying a shiny new drawing tablet for my online teaching also does quite a lot for my mood. So perhaps give that a go. just say something about cost too because a visualizer can and will set you back probably a hundred pounds to get a good one at the minimum whereas a drawing tablet you can get one that is perfectly good enough for about 30 quid but at the higher end a pen display is probably the most expensive option out of all of these incidentally to compare this pen display to a drawing tablet this is not without its drawbacks because the thing about this is is you're always kind of hunched over looking at it Whereas with a drawing tablet, you actually look ahead of you at the screen. You don't need to look down at what you're doing. A lot of people talk about the learning curve as well, using these that aren't screens and looking ahead of you. It's actually really intuitive and it won't take you more than half an hour to get used to it and you'll be writing just as neat as you do on any piece of paper or on a pen display like this. 
and you can get a small drawing tablet which is good enough for just highlighting or writing a few equations a note here and there and you can actually get them as cheap as about 20 quid. Check out MathMathX because he has a buying guide for drawing tablets and he even goes into the cheapest ones that you can get which some are the size of sort of photographs. But if you buy any drawing tablet from Huion or XP Pen or Wacom other kind of more traditional player in the market a little bit more expensive than the other two then that'll be perfectly fine and it should pretty much just plug and play with Windows Ink and you'll be absolutely fine. But for modeling the answer is the visualizer and modeling is something that you can do online it's a really important part of great teaching and you can do it almost as well online as you can in the classroom. So whilst I may only use the visualizer for about 10 minutes of a lesson it's probably the most important 10 minutes of that lesson. And if I didn't have that option, then I'd probably be stuck with the videos of other YouTubers or YouTubers who maybe have done a demo that I wanted to show or can show how to use a particular piece of equipment or something. I'd be stuck with their explanation rather than being able to give my own explanation live. Relying on YouTube is relying on something that isn't tailored to your own class. There isn't the opportunity for the class to say, wait, sir, hang on, what was that thing you just did? Or I don't have that button on my calculator, what's the difference? <laughs> And if you have to send them a YouTube link, then it doesn't integrate well into your live lessons and you're relying on them to actually watch that video in their own time and take the right meaning from it. So there are lots of people who are in the camp with me that this is the one that you wouldn't want to be without. Ideally, you'd have both options. So check out my video on how to teach with a visualizer or a document camera here, where I go into a bit more detail on the benefits of those. And I've also got my review of the pen display that I use here. And let me know if you're interested in a kind of buying guide of different visualizers or indeed pen tablets. All you need really to be able to teach online with a visualizer is one with a USB connection. It should show up just like a USB camera in whatever streaming software you're using. This one from IPVO is great, but there's loads of good options out there, but I do recommend getting one that also has the HDMI input, because when you're in the classroom back at school, you'll thank yourself for getting one that you don't automatically need to plug into the computer before showing it to your class. Thanks a lot for watching Google Physics. Any questions about teacher tech and teaching online during this time, then please just let me know in the comments.